Hey guys, welcome back. It's Scott from Off Grid with Whiskey and Sunshine. Today, we're going to talk about chainsaws. How you can maybe make a decision ahead of time and select the right one for you and avoid yourself a lot of hassle without buying something you don't need, but get all the tool that you do need. So, I got four different saws here to take a look at. Okay, so obviously I know right now this looks like a steel commercial and you probably think that I'm some kind of big steel fanboy or hell, you might even think I'm sponsored by steel. None of that is true. All of these saws were paid for with our own money. Some are older than others and they all have a different purpose. Hopefully I can explain some of the differences to you. Decide for yourself what saw might be the right saw for you and what one might be too much. Basically, if you've been following our channel, you know that we live in Maine. We live up here in the Northeast. And for years, there have been three major brands of chainsaws in the Northeast. Steel, which I have here, Husqvarna, and John's Red. There are some other saws out there. Up here in the Northeast, they're still at the homeowner level. They haven't marketed their pro saws up here for some reason. I don't know why. But it's always been the big three. Recently, Jones Red has kind of gone out of business and be rebranded as something, that I guess they call it Red Max. I don't know. Uh, it looked like a lot of their professional stuff has gone away. And my dealer stopped dealing in Jones Reds completely, and he was only dealing in Husqvarna's, which that's what I used for many years, Jones Red and Husqvarna's. And I had no problem with any of them. I firmly believe... If you buy a good quality saw from Husqvarna or uh, steel, you're not going to have anything to complain about either way because there really isn't that much difference. There's some little features that are different, but there really isn't enough to bother with, let alone argue about. They're both great saws, especially the professional quality ones. The homeowner saws, maybe not so much. You may get a better bang for your buck from one brand. You'll have to do some of that research on your own. I had two Jones Red saws, and by chance one time they both broke down on the same weekend, and the shop that serviced them for me wasn't open, and I had a bunch of wood I had to get sawn. So in a nutshell, I went chainsaw shopping. And on a whim, I ended up buying this. They don't make this model anymore. This has been, this is an MS-361. It replaced the old uh, 036, I guess it was called. That was the original version of it. And then uh, now it's been replaced by the 362, which is uh, another Stratosaw. It's got the uh, electronic ignition that adjusts itself and the electronic carburetor that adjusts itself, all that stuff. Uh, at this point, no more than I use this big saw, I don't feel it's necessary to go out and buy the brand new one just to say I have a new one. This saw is probably 12, maybe 15 years old. It's provided very good service. It's been a great saw. It's only been to the shop once and that was for rotted fuel line. So if nothing else, as long as you keep the right fuel in them, they're dependable. Now this saw is a 60cc saw. It's got the full 20 inch bar. 3 8 pitch chain, full chisel. This is very much a professional chainsaw. The size, the way it's built, these professional saws, there's a lot more metal. The crankcase is metal instead of being polycarbonate. It's just a, it's a professional tool. As such, the, I think last I checked, the 362, which is the new version of this saw now, I believe is up almost $900, between an eight and $900 saw. Now that's a lot of money for a tool. I originally had this big of a saw because we used to buy a lot of our wood by the truckload, and I mean tree length by the truckload. So a log truck would show up here and he'd unload a whole truckload of logs, and I had to saw them all, saw them all down to 18 inch wood. That's where this saw really shines because you're not just getting wood that's this big around and this big around, you're getting wood that's that big around. You're getting everything, you're getting a big mix. You can stand on the pile with this thing and run that bar down through 
three or four different logs. Once you start, you can set over and go every 18 inches and you keep pushing the loose pieces out of the way. You can get a lot sawn in a hurry. That's why I still have this. But it's heavy. And like I said, they're expensive. I've had it all this time. I really don't have any plans to get rid of it. Although I do have back problems now. I don't run it anywhere as near as often as I used to. Still a good saw. This next saw is still considered a professional saw. Now it's a 50cc size. 261C, MS261C. Now what that C means basically is it's been modified. These are actually available either way. You can get the uh, M-Tronic saws that are automatic adjustable. They're adjusting themselves all the time. They have a microprocessor on there which is what this one is. Or you can get the old style one that you still have to adjust the carburetor with a screwdriver. Uh, people fight about that. I don't know why. I, I bought this one brand new at Wallingford's in Auburn, in Auburn, Maine, Wallingford Equipment. And they told me that they, they sell the same amount either way, whether they're the old mechanical adjustments or whether they're the automatic. They don't seem to have a lot of problem with the automatic ones with the C-Series. They say if you're going to have problems, it's going to be right off. It'll be under warranty. You bring it in. They replace what needs to be replaced. You're back in business. It's a very easy saw to run and maintain. It's got an unbelievable power to weight ratio. It's a, it's a very small saw, as you can see. It's a lot smaller. It actually runs 0.325 pitch chain instead of 3 eighths. What that pitch is, is the difference between the distance between these rivets. This is 0.325 of an inch, and the big saw is 3 eighths. It's an even 3 eighths. The big saw is sharpened with a 7 30 seconds file. This one, the way I've got it chained up right now, is sharpened with a 3 16 because I like the professional chains. I, I can see better to sharpen them. I still sharpen my saws by hand. I don't use a grinder, so, you know, it's, it's easier on my eyes. I think they might cut a little better. But either way, the homeowner's chain that's a semi-chisel, still very good chain. It's just a little harder for me to sharpen because it's harder for me to see. Like I said, this is still a professional saw. It's still got the metal crankcase made out of magnesium, I believe. Um, it's got all the stuff that you'd find on a big professional saw. Like I said, everything is metal. There's no plastic ex except the stuff that you'd normally accept, expect to be plastic. It'd be like the air bonnet and the fuel tank, stuff like that. But your side cover, crankcase, all that stuff is all made out of magnesium instead of being a polycarbonate clamshell that you find on like your farmer saws, farm, farm and ranch saws, or homeowner saws, which we'll get into in a second. This is probably used twice as often as my big saw is. I, this is kind of my go-to. Um, it's big enough to do anything with. It may not do it as fast as a big one, but it, it will still do it, even with big wood, because it's still got a lot of power. And it's fairly light. Uh, every saw manufacturer makes one of these saws like this. They have a professional grade, high RPM, high power to weight ratio, 50cc saw, and that's what they call their smallest ground saw. And what they mean by a ground saw is it's a saw that a worker would use on the ground felling or limbing or, you know, bucking, whatever. Whereas Steel and all the other companies, Jones Red, whatever, also make what are called bucket saws that have a top handle. And they're made pretty much exclusively for being in a bucket. So this is Steel's smallest professional ground saw meant to be used on the ground. You could use it in a bucket, but it's... Still kind of big to be up in a up in a bucket truck. That's the purpose. Uh, loggers might buy one of these to keep on their skitter or to keep in their truck in case there's a tree down. They don't want the hassle of dealing with a farm and ranch saw or a homeowner saw, so they buy the professional grade. Now, that also still comes at a cost. Last I knew, these 261Cs were going for around $650. So quite a bit cheaper than the big saws, but still 
that's a lot of money, you know? And if, if you're the guy that lives in suburbia, maybe you've got maybe three or four acres, you've got some trees every now and then one blows down, you want to have a saw around the house, this probably isn't the best idea. I mean, it's a great saw. It'll be more than capable of doing whatever you want it to do, but it's kind of overkill, if you know what I'm saying. So if somebody was saying, if, you know, what would be the perfect ideal homesteading chainsaw, I would say you couldn't do any better than an MS-261C. I've had the this is the pie in the sky option. It's expensive. It'll probably last you half a lifetime. It's a lot of power in a small package. Great little saw. I bought this one a while ago. This is a little MS-180. The MS-180 and the MS-175 are almost the identical saw. I think the 180's got just a little bit more displacement. Other than that, the only difference is the capacity of the oil and the gas tank. This one holds a little more than the 170 does. I was thinking about buying an MS-250. They're going out of those. You can still get a new one, but they're not going to have parts around for them as long, I don't believe. Their power to weight ratio is a little better than this but they're still a little heavier. I bought this when I was having a real hard time with my back. I wanted something that I could hold up and carry around and be able to do little jobs with without using one of the big saws. And it's done that, and it's done it very, very well. It is a homeowner's saw. It's not even a farm and ranch saw. It is, as far as steel goes, it's the cheapest of the cheap. If you want to take a zoom in here, you can see that everything is made out of polycarbonate. It's all plastic. This is, is like a clamshell that folds up like this. The motor actually drops into that with the crankshaft and everything. It goes right into that crankshell, uh, into that um, crankcase. So these cases don't split. You can't pull them apart and put bearings in them as easily. They're not meant to be as, as serviceable. That can be said for the farm and ranch saws too. A lot of polycarbonate, they're built the same way. It's supposed to be inexpensive, and they are. They are inexpensive. I think this saw was, I think it's right around $200. I might have got it a little less than that, but for 200 bucks, you're talking like a 33 to a 35 cc chainsaw, and you can cut a tree with this. I mean, it, it, I wouldn't go out and, and start cutting 30-inch pine with it or something like that. But, I mean, you you could definitely cut down trees that are a foot thick. This saw is going to do just fine. Uh, everything on it works well. The air filter is easy to clean. It doesn't have the new toolless gas caps like the big saw has, but that really doesn't matter. Um, it runs very small. They call it 3 8 low pro, a Pico chain. And I think you file that with a, I want to say it's a four millimeter file. It's really small. You can't upgrade the chain really to put any bigger chain on it like you can with some of the other saws. You're kind of stuck with that small chain because it's a small chainsaw. But if you're the guy, like I said, maybe you got between an acre and five acres of land, you're not going to heat with wood. All you're interested in is keeping your yard cleaned up, maybe cutting a little bit of firewood around the house, something like that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this saw. And I'm going to tell you a secret. For the past year, that's probably the second most widely used saw that we have. The other two saws are great. This one is either in my truck or on my tractor almost all the time. And when I need it, I know right where it is. If I need to cut something, I just grab it and it's being used. So it gets shut off and started a lot. It doesn't seem to care. Some saws don't like that. This thing doesn't seem to care. It puts up with it. For a $200 chainsaw, really, you can't ask for a lot more than that. It's, it's not a bad idea. For your average homeowner, this is probably actually all you need. Now, there is an in-between. There is an in-between. Once you get in to the size saw of the 261, you can buy a farm and ranch saw 
that's basically the same size, but it's built like a homeowner's saw rest. It's still going to have the carbon fiber, a polycarbonate crankcase, and all that stuff. It might make it a little bit heavier. And I think the homeowner's alternative to the MS-261, the farm and ranch one, would be the farm boss. I think that's a 271. Displacement-wise, it's actually a tiny bit bigger. But horsepower-wise, it's almost a half a horsepower smaller. So the power-to-weight ratio is not as good. It's not a, a professional saw. It's better than a homeowner's saw. Not as good as a professional saw. The MS-261, the farm and ranch one, would be the farm boss. I think that's a 271. Displacement-wise, it's actually a tiny bit bigger. But horsepower-wise, it's almost a half a horsepower smaller. So the power to weight ratio is not as good. It's not a, a professional saw. It's better than a homeowner's saw. Not as good as a professional saw. Still a very viable choice. Especially, I think they're $150 to $200 cheaper than what this would be. So like if you were going to buy, oh, this one I think I said was six and a quarter. I want to say the other ones are right around... 475 to 500 bucks for like a, a, a MS 271 or a 291, which are both very similar saws. But that's the point, that 50cc mark, where you see a lot of professional saws overlapping with homeowners and farm and ranch saws. Because they have them that are all about the same size and same displacement. The only difference is how they're built and how long they're supposed to last. That's pretty much it. That is a steel GTA 26. It is a battery operated cordless handheld four inch chainsaw. You can run it with two hands. You can run it with one hand. It's got this nice safety cover so you can't hit the tip and end up with the saw kicking. Uh, it's just a... It's just a great, quiet little saw. Uh, I got it for my wife, Shelly, for, I think, either Mother's Day or her birthday one year. And she just loves the thing. You can, I mean, you can use it for so many things. It works great for doing, you know, like if you're cutting bean poles for your garden or you're cutting limbs off from trees, anything you can reach, you can cut with this. We used to use a Sawzall a lot for things like that. Sawzall is probably twice as heavy as this little saw is. That's number one. It doesn't cut as smooth, and it doesn't cut as fast. The only downside is the battery life. You can only run it maybe 14, 15 minutes, and the battery is going to be dead. So what we did was we bought a spare battery. So we always have one on the charger and one in the machine, and you can get quite a bit done with it that way. But this gets used around the house and up and down the driveway more often than any of the other saws. Just because it's so easy. You can throw it, you know, on the four-wheeler, in the truck, on the tractor, and you can pick it up. If there's a limb in your way, you cut it right off. You know, like I said, anything up to four inches. Now, the bigger wood you cut, the faster your battery's going to drain. Uh, I think these, last I checked, were around $150. I think the spare battery might be 40 something like that, which I would advise you to get. They come with uh, a charger and a little, uh, it's like a, it looks like a box, but actually what it's made to do is hang on the wall and it holds the saw, it holds the charger, your spare battery, whatever else. It's got like little loops. Comes with a little bottle of oil. It's not real bar and chain oil. I think it might be like regular household oil. You just squirt some on the bar and that's enough because you're not, you're not getting into the dirt on these as much as you would be you know, in a full-size chainsaw. So, steel will tell you, you know, the chains are like maybe $12 to $15 each because they're so short. Steel will tell you, when it gets dull, just throw that chain away and put a new one on there. But I I could take this off and put it in my clamp downstairs and file a chain. I've already done it once. They file, no problem. You just got to pay attention because they're really small. It's a very handy little tool. Very handy. It's just way too handy not to have. 
So you might see one and say, why the hell would anybody want that? Well, if you bought one and you started using it, you'd see why. Because it's easy to use, it's very handy. You don't have to use a big machine. You can use this one little thing. That's another thing I just happened to think of that was a difference between professional and more homeowners or farm and ranch saws. It's fairly typical of all the big manufacturers that their professional saws will have adjustable oilers for the chain. You can turn your, your rate of oiling on your chain up and down with a screwdriver. These homeowner saws don't have that. To me, that's not really that big of a deal because I typically will take these saws that are adjustable and I'll open that screw up right, wide open and as long as it's not dripping oil when it's sitting still, at least not a lot of it, I just leave it that way. So having an adjustable oiler isn't that big of a deal. It might be to you, but that, that is another difference that comes to mind. But anyway, I hope that answers your question about some of the differences between homeowners, farm and ranch, and professional grade chainsaws. If you like this video, you can check out some of our other stuff.